Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary in Northborough. For those of you who haven't seen the show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, I do nothing but elder law, and, and this is not about law. The purpose of this show, which really kind of grew out of some of the elder law work I do, um, was to acquaint you with the people you need to know um, as a senior and the pro programs you need to know so that you can stay at home. Like my friends Frank and Mary, oftentimes I do my presentations and I always talk about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids Peter, Paul and Mary Jr. and I always say their goal in life is to live in their house till they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they live in Northboro, they want that backyard to be in Northboro. They want to stay here. So the question is, how can you make Northboro the kind of place where people can just live as long as they're alive? So um, as the obvious co-host for this show, I somehow convinced Kelly Burke, who once again, no one knows me, everyone knows Kelly, from the, from the, who was the director of the Senior Center, to co-host this show. And also, she's the one who finds the great guests that we have on the show all the time. And among others, you've got another wonderful one Absolutely. today. So nice to see you again. It's nice to see you too. Always great. And now who do we have today? Well, I'm happy to introduce you to Anna, who's the director of PBSI in, in Worcester. And I'm going to let her explain what all those initials mean. What, what all of those mean. And, and, and now we were just talking a little bit beforehand. Also, so tell us what PBSI stands for. And, and tell us how you ended up here. Are you a Northboro person originally? Do, are you a Worcester person? What do you, you know, how do you, how did you end up where you're doing? Sure. Right? So, um, PBSI is a Paratransit Brokerage Services um, Transportation Management Inc. We have a very long name. Wow. That's <laughs> an incredible name. I was going to forget something. <laughs> that's an incredible name. Okay. Yeah. So, we are a contractor that works on behalf of Worcester Regional Transit Authority. The, w, the WRTA, WRTA. That that's people correct. may be more familiar with those initials, mm -hmm. right? And so you're a contractor to them. That's correct. And um, what we do is, uh, my department is responsible for customer service mm -hmm. for the WRTA community, mm -hmm. as well as paratransit services, where we take um, trip requests and also create schedules for several of the um, local towns, including Northboro, Boylston, West, uh, Westboro, West Boylston, um, Auburn, Leicester, Oxford, and the city of Worcester. <laughs> why does she do that? So I know, is the great. And, so why is it there are just specific towns for which you're doing s schedules? I'm just kind of curious. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so the WRTA, in addition to having a contract with us, yeah. um, also has several contracts with other um, oh, groups that provide the services that we provide to their specific communities. I get it. So, but, so you're the ones on behalf of WRTA mm -hmm. who are taking care of Northboro. That's correct. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, and now, and Kelly knows all of this stuff, obviously, because she's doing it every day. So, and, but I bet nobody else has any idea how this works. So <laughs> can you explain how the system works? First of all, one of the things we mentioned, you mentioned mm -hmm. when we were before the show, which I never knew, was that there is a there is there is federal regulation that's that specifies that if you're running a, a kind of a regional transit system that among other things you actually have to have an alternative system for folks who are you know over 60 or disabled right right so um, under federal regulations yeah. any transit authority that provides fixed route service so that's the big buses that travel along a predetermined route yeah. Um, that agency has to provide services to individuals with disabilities, regardless of their age, who are not able to use the fixed route service for either some or all of their trips because of some functional issues that prevent them from using the regular service. I see. I thought it was fascinating because yeah. I, I bet you that happened around the time of the Americans with Disabilities Act. I, yes. I bet it was like a, func yes. like a function of right. that. So it's fascinating. It mm -hmm. So, so tell, tell us how all of that how all that works. Right. So um, the WRTA yeah. does not run a fixed route service in the town of Northboro. Mm -hmm. However, um, in addition to the federally required ADA related paratransit services, the WRTA also offers similar services with, um, in, with the works with the town of Northboro through Kelly 
um, to provide paratransit services to anyone who lives in the town of Northboro, mm -hmm. um, who's over the age of 60, or also anyone who's younger who has a doc documented disability. And, and when you say, is that 60 and older or over 60? I'm over 60. Yep. Over 60. So 60, everybody 61. 61 and older can call. 60 and older. Oh, it is. So it's actually 60 and older. That's why I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> 60 is the magic number. And so, and so how do people take advantage of that service? What, you know, what, what, how do they do it? How do they connect with you, right? What are the mechanisms? Where can they go? What's the sign up? Can you just kind of, can you just kind of sure. talk about what that is? Because so, once again, I know that people have mm -hmm. maybe have some sense of it, mm -hmm. and I bet you've got some regular users. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And I bet there's a whole bunch of others who are just totally clueless on this, right? So just it's a good if you service. could ex explain that, that would be great. So there's two um, ways where you, that you can register for the service. Mm -hmm. One is through um, the Northboro Senior Center. Another way would be for um, the person to get in contact with our office. Um, directly. So our number is 508-752-9283. And when you call, you speak with one of our call takers. And by the way, we'll have mm -hmm. a, we'll get a banner for this show yeah. so that the people will be able to see that this number okay, very while good. the show is going. All right. right. That'd be great. Um, and once you call, you reach one of our call takers. They take down your information. So your first name, your last name, your address, uh, your date of birth. Um, also, they ask some questions in regards to your um, need for the vehicle. So, for example, if you're someone who uses a wheelchair, we need to know that information. If you use a walker, we need to know that information. And also, um, if you travel with a service animal um, or if you tend to travel with a companion or a PCA, that's some information that we ask you. Because um, you can actually accommodate for all of that? That's mm -hmm. correct. Yep. Yeah. So once you are registered with us, what mm -hmm. happens is we send um, the Northboro town brochure to you that has some specific information about the service. In addition to that, we also mail you a schedule. So the schedule basically is something that uh, the town of Northboro with us set up uh, to help riders, to help group as many trips as possible so that the service can be um, both efficient and meet the needs of the public as well. So when you get the schedules, uh, that kind of give, gives you a guideline of where you can go during which hours. But typically the service runs Monday through Thursday between 7.30 and 3.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then on Fridays, we um, 7.30 a.m. to um, about 11.40 um, AM. So it's throughout the week. And when you, when you talk about mm -hmm. schedules, mm -hmm. can you talk about, so where, what are the, I want to say they're fixed schedules, mm -hmm. they're fit schedules, meeting schedules of like what certain destinations that would happen, that you could go to that day? So yeah. it's a you, combination it's, of yeah. both. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. It's also door to door. That's correct. So um, people, when they make their appointments, mm -hmm. obviously their address and they need to know the address of where they're going. I see. So when you when you say a schedule, the schedule is just the times that's during which the the, the bus is operating, that's right? Correct. Right. Not mm -hmm. necessarily a schedule that says you know on Monday we're going from you <laughs> well, know a little bit. Yeah. 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 Just to make it a little bit more complicated. A little bit. And I it's should a, say, yeah. you know what? I made a, I made an error. It's curb to curb. It's not a door to door service. Curb, curb to curb. curb. Oh, right. So they got to be at the curb to the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get. It. Okay. So can you give some examples of kind of where, you, you know, mm -hmm. what you folks have agreed to in terms of the places where oftentimes people would go? Sure. So um, Monday through Thursday, yeah. uh, people are able to schedule trips in town for any mm -hmm. purpose and then out of town trips for medical appointments or for work related purposes. Um, then we also have on Mondays and Thursdays, uh, on rotating basis, there's what we call our specials, mm -hmm. where, for example, the on the first um, Monday of every month, there's a trip to Walmart. So uh, oh. clients are picked up at one o'clock and um, to be brought to Walmart and brought back at 3 p.m. So that's our way of trying to group as many people as possible um, so that you know we operate an efficient service. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. The second uh, Monday of every month, we go to Christmas tree shop. Um, third Monday is um, Lyman Street. Is that what it is? Lyman Street? Lyman. Yeah, Lyman Street. Lyman Street. <laughs> Lyman. Yes. Um, what would you do on Lyman Street? Lyman Street it's, Plaza. Oh, the it's, plaza, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. Sorry. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, the fourth Monday, we go to Salpan Mall. And then if there's a fifth Monday uh, in the month, which does happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Every once in a while. Right. Uh, we do go to, um, I'm sorry, West Meadow Plaza. So, so do you find that, that well, I, I don't know if you would, if, because people aren't coming to the senior center to go, but I was wondering if you find that this, many of the same people are using the service. Yes. Like monthly. Yes. yes. Yeah, there definitely are, like um, Anna was saying, the, the, the regulars that yeah. go. Um, a lot of people use the service to come up to the senior center so they can come up for lunch or go to uh, any activity. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah that um, makes sense. And, you know, and, and it's, it's a great thing to use for medical appointments. As you know, uh, driving into Worcester, well, maybe not for you, but for some people it's a little bit intimidating. It's, it's a lot of traffic and... Um, you know, this service is great because they pull right up to the door and, you know, you don't have to go to a garage or that kind of thing. So people, I think, really appreciate that, too, for going to doctor's appointments and coming home. And, and how far can you, will you go? I mean, it, will, will, there must be some, there's got to be some limit to how there's far, a, right? There is. How does that work? So, in, in terms of the doctor's appointments, because I would think that would be the most common mm -hmm, out-of-town visit, right? Yeah. So... Um, for medical appointments, yeah. we do bring people to Worcester yeah. for medical appointments and then any adjacent towns for medical appointments as well. I get it. I get it. So you're not bringing people to Boston, no. right? No. But Worcester, I, I would bet that the vast majority of folks are connected with either St. Vincent's or the UMass yeah, absolutely. system, right? Yeah. So that's, that's a real convenience. Yeah. And all of, the, all of the vans are owned by WRTA and insured by them. Um, and even though, have, even though, and how much do you charge them for the parking space? Oh, because yeah. yeah. no, we're in a on. contract together. Come on, you're a you team. Know, we're we're you're a team. team. Yeah. So the WRTA buses that they always see in your parking lot, they're actually are owned by WRTA, they're actually their but buses. Um, yep. they, they do have, um, you know, our name on there, North Pro COA, right. so people know. And the van drivers, we have. I didn't realize that. So, that, so that it's branded as North. It is is it, branded. Does it say both? Is it WRTA mm -hmm. and North? Oh, yes. that's great. It's wrapped. That's great. I believe that's the WRTA. Uh, and owned by the WRTA yeah. operated, operated by, by yeah. North I got it. Mm -hmm. and, and who are the bus drivers? Are bus they drivers, your bus drivers? Are they, they their are, bus drivers? Who are they? They, they are mine, but yeah. I share them with um, <laughs> PBSI yes. because yes. they're in contact with, um, and it has a great staff um, that talk to my drivers. Um, every day, so they either fax or email in the schedule for the next day. Wait, well, you know, we get that in the, yeah. the afternoon before, and then when the drivers come in to the senior center in the morning, they pick up that manifest so they know where they're going for that day. The nice thing too is that uh, WRTA has provided computers, little computers, mentors that they are on yeah. the vans, um, that actually is an electronic version of the manifest and. Um, that little thing can be a GPS, and it's a phone, oh, and, wow. and so they That's they can so um, you know, the schedulers can send messages right to the van drivers if somebody cancels or right. is running late at an appointment, something like that. And I bet the GPS is just a, such a convenience, it right? Is. Because it's you're, you're, if it's curb to curb, if it's curbside, that means they're going all over the place. Right, they right? really are. And, and yeah. they may know the street, but to know the fastest way, mm -hmm. like all the time. So who are your bus drivers? Are they? Are they? Are they? Paid employees? Are they volunteers? Um, yes. Yep. They're paid employees of, yeah. of Northboro, and they're a great group of guys. I can't say enough good things about them. That they are friendly and um, they get people to their appointments on time. And uh, you know, and the important thing to remember too is that it's a public transportation service. It's not a taxi where you know you you're picked up and and then people wait for you to come out. They are busy doing dropping right. other people off at appointments and things like that. But they get back to get you. They, when folks call into Anna's office uh, to PBSI, they tell them, "I need an hour at this doctor's appointment, or an hour and a half," and and they are great in accommodating that. So, um, and and the because that's got to be a, that's got to be a challenge. I mean, you're just coordinating. You've got a lot of 
That's you got a lot, lot of, of work. you got a yeah. lot of pieces that are going. They right? have a great, um, obviously great staff, but they have a, a yep. nice uh, computer system too that helps them arrange all those. And is there any charge for any of this to the to the to North Bros to the seniors? Yes. Yep. There is a, a charge that goes out by town. So any trips taking in town mm -hmm. um, is a dollar fifty one way, mm -hmm. and an additional quarter for each town that you go out. That you go through. I mm -hmm. see. I see. And how does that get charged? Do you, does that when you know when you're wa when you're walking into the is it like the you know little fair thing and you <laughs> drop in the coins? So yeah. um, prior to the beginning of the year. Prior to very recently. <laughs> yes. Very, yes. Recent, very, very recently. This is big news. Yes. Um, we, as of January 1st, we transitioned into an automated fare collection system mm -hmm. where um, our riders no longer have to pay the driver when, they, when the vehicles arrive. Um, so currently, the way the system works is each of our registered rider has an, a fare account set up with my office and they um, add funds to that account. So they can oh, add funds um, through many different ways yeah, via it's like credit. Fa it's like FastPass. Very yep. similar to um, Fastly. Yeah. Yep. So there's um, four different ways to add funds to these accounts. Yep. One is um, through an online portal with a credit card or a debit card where you can set it up as a one-time payment. So let's say today I'm going to add $20 to my account, or you can set it up as a reoccurring payment. So let's say today I'm gonna to add $20 to my account, I see. but as I use the service and the fare gets deducted and my balance reaches $5, it will charge my card another $20. Um, another option is to call the call center at the same time as you're calling to request your trips. Mm -hmm. And you can add funds via a credit card or a debit card with staff. They can process that for you. Um, third option will be for clients to send mail in a check or a money order issued to the WRTA and those get mailed to the WRTA customer service and our address is 60 Foster Street in Worcester, Massachusetts, 01608. Which will also be, also be in that banner. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we can have either checks or money orders that are sent to us. Um, and a Fourth option would be via cash at the WRTA customer service located in Worcester. I see. But in all cases, you're prepaying. You are so, prepaying. So you're, the you're not have to go through any of this hassle of trying to figure out what's going on when you're walking onto the vehicle. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And not That's having correct change, which we used right. to ask people to have correct change because, of course, drivers didn't have change and that kind right. of thing. Right. So I think you know when you the efficiency of it and the you know the time spent. Um, in that in, in exchanging money is gone now. It's so gone. it's, it's uh, I think it's great. It makes so, it a safer environment as well because mm -hmm. there's, there's no, no money, money on the vehicles anymore. Right. That's right. You know, not to say That's that right. we've had an issue with that because we right. were fortunate enough not to have an issue with it, but it just creates a um, less stressful environment for the riders and also mm -hmm. for the drivers. Yeah. Right. Um, and like, who uses money anymore? I mean, it's the isn't it strange? Know, Once again, for us, <laughs> not you, young. Yeah. <laughs> when you act to have grown up, you know, seeing a lot of money move no, around, right. and that's now right. it's like I found myself. It's just like non-existent. Mm -hmm. It just it just non-existent. Yeah, so true. so Kelly, how? So you've been there for quite a while now. So how has this changed? How has the program gr grown and changed over the time that you've been senior center director? Mm -hmm. And 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 from your from what you hear from seniors in North Row, how do you see that changing in the future? Mm -hmm. How do you see how do you see it growing? How do you see the needs perhaps changing in, in general? Because transportation, as we've often talked about, whether it's if, if Frank and Mary are you know, basically, if 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 you're going to stay at home as you get older, mm -hmm. right? And you e even if you really want to have your car, you want to have your car, but you don't want to be driving it a lot, mm -hmm. you know. So so. To the extent that you've got this kind of service, it's really helping, you know, the folks that we deal with all the time. Oh, it absolutely! I see it helping every day. So we, um, when I arrived in 2005 in Northboro, um, there was a small bus company named Avcoa that actually did Avcoa. the transportation. Mm -hmm. That was the name of it. Um, and then in 2008, um, we, WRTA in, in Northboro, got together and decided to do. Um, a contract and provide the service through the senior center and with PBSI. And so 
um, there was a little bit of a, you know, the getting used to dialing another, another uh, number, yeah. but people were used to calling another organization to book that ride. I see. Um, and so it was pretty seamless there. And the other really great thing is we got um, Alcoa drivers that already knew um, the older adults here in town. And oh, so they were the same people that just same, switched over. They just switched over. over. Yeah. So we had, yeah. um, we had some great van drivers that have, um, have passed now. But got the got the program off to a good start, um, and so I've just. So seen do you have it. like pictures of them in the car? I you know, should. That, right? I should. In memoriam. Yes. The bus yes. Yeah. Because I suppose uh, if you're a senior and you you've just been living with the same bus driver yes, for like 10, that was, 15 years. I think that years. was very comforting to people yes. to see the same smiling face mm -hmm. when they came it's like in the van. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. To, right. Yeah. It was uh, Mike Ryan and uh, Kevin Daly who have passed that were great van drivers. Joe Duca came on at the same time as, as those folks in 2008. He was from FCO as well. He's still yeah. providing service with us and we've added great van drivers. So, um, And how many vans are there, by the way? There, there are three there? vans. There were three. There are two vans on the road Monday through Thursday. Yeah. And then we have one van on the road and it just does Northboro predominantly on Friday because of the one van. I got it. Um, and, and so I think Again, we're going to see just just like we see major growth in the whole older adult population. It's going to be another service that you know t tends to hold the, that that in, group of people. In terms of numbers, it's just going to keep it's just going to keep on I, growing. Like all of our numbers are going to go now, up. Now, do you have going up. just? I, I'm not looking for statistics, but in kind of order of magnitude, comparing how many people use the service in a day or a week when you came versus how many people use it now. Do you have a sense of that, of how much I, that's I've grown? I see, you probably know maybe more statistically. I just We know typically, it from... um, it depends on the month and how many mm -hmm. um, full days yeah. the month falls on. But on average, I would say we do about 350 riders Trip. a month. Trips. Yeah. yeah. So that includes all the people that we've transported, yeah. Um, yeah. the riders, their PCAs, and any companions that are going with them. And it does change month to month. If we have a month that has holidays and the right. vehicles yeah. are or not bad weather, right? I was going to say, are there are there seasons that are much busier than others in terms of like the ridership? Absolutely. Um, typically, uh, winter seasons slow down a little bit. Um, for some reason, August tends to be a slower month as well. We typically see more um, riders in the spring yes. months. And then um, I would say June, July is usually a, um, a large higher number of trips. And, and, and in terms of mm -hmm. who's riding, do they tend to be on the younger side? You're saying you're 60 and older, that's mm -hmm. a big range, right? Mm -hmm. Who, who is your kind of, is, or is there a such thing as a kind of a typical rider or, or a, a group that uses this you know, more versus, versus right. other age groups? I'm just curious. Um, I can't give you the specific breakdown, yeah. you know, yeah, 60 yeah. to 65. Yeah. Um, but, but kind of anecdotally, based right. on what you've seen. But what we see is we have um, the usuals, <laughs> so the clients of that course. we know this day, that's where they're going to be going, the clients that come to the um, senior center religiously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we almost expect these trips to happen. And then we have the population who use the service for medical appointments. So let's say in I town, see. you know, they either get around, um, they drive, but places like Worcester, they don't, you know, they feel more comfortable mm -hmm. using our service. So we have um, the clients who are kind of the typical riders who use it religiously, and then those that are more occasional riders. and with time, you see people transition to rely on the service a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as they age and maybe their ability to drive is, sure. um, is not as good as it was previously. Sure, and they get more comfortable with it. Right. They just get more, you know, as you say, and they know the driver, so it isn't yeah, like it's... Yeah, I think that, that makes you know, a big difference. And, right. and I think, you know, that once people give it a shot and see, you know, how satisfied they are, then they're going to be returned yeah. and they'll become regulars too. And, and so, and from your perspective, if you, if you could, if you could add anything, right, because you've got a program that's obviously working well and it's mm -hmm. got a big history and you've got a lot of clientele. If you were, if you were growing this program, how would it change, right? Or if you were, 
in terms of the schedule, for example, are there other places that you think would be would be great other places for folks to be going? You know, once again, if you had if you had capacity, right? I'm just, right. just you know, curious. if I obviously if if we had that capacity, yeah. we do get people who want to go to Framingham and Boston. You know, that's not going to happen within um, the parameters that we have. Right. Um, we could always extend hours. You know, the senior center is open until eight o'clock on Tuesday nights. Um, you know, and, and oh, so you have to have you have to have last call. If it's, it's, that's right. Especially if you start if you start doing wine nights and stuff. Yeah, that, you know, yeah, you yeah, have to get that's that. probably not going to happen. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, to, maybe to add but and, to, and you know, and we look time. at that you yeah. know for the schedule of the senior center too. That's always something that we're you know thinking about and into the future. Maybe we'll be doing different hours there and. And um, you know we could turn to the um, to PVSI and WRTA and talk about those things. But right now there's a, a finite amount of hours that we right. can access for the van drivers, you know, every week. So. But, it, but it sounds like it just works well. It does it work sounds well. Like, so so once again we're gonna, we're going to have on that banner right. Mm -hmm. We're, we're talking to our tech people who are listening yes, yes. to it, right? <laughs> we're going to have that, you know, we're going to have the, the, the address and we're going to have the phone number. Mm -hmm. And maybe is there an e even an email address where you... We do have an email. Great. If you could just kind of get mm -hmm. that contact information. This is really terrific, right? It so it really, really gives, it gives it, I mean, I think it gives, you got 400 people who are, you know, or 400 trips. You got a lot of seniors here, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of people who haven't tried it yet. Right. right. So just yep. to get them to go for that, you know, and you get a great destination. You can see Kelly, right? You can go to the senior center. You can actually have see one lunch. of the most yes. happening senior centers in central Massachusetts. Oh, that's, that's, that's our, that's our new special. logo yes. now. It's very, it's very <laughs> special. It's very special. So thank you so much for that. So at the end of our shows, at the, at the, for the last five minutes, I, we, we always, I get to ask Kelly what's kind of what's going on and what's new and what's exciting at the senior center. So what's What's new? Wow. What's, what's going to be well, new? Well, we got some exciting things happening in the bistro. We're going to mm -hmm. have. Um, I the just talked to. I just talked popping. to Vicky today, and she and Carolyn are going to have something for the Super Bowl next week. So we're That's talking about terrific. maybe Brady Burgers or uh, <laughs> I know there's a whole lot of things that they've got up their sleeves. So um, you know, you keep looking for that. Now, um, is there a widescreen? Is we it? don't have a widescreen. No, we're not doing it. This will be during right, the got, week. You got to talk to the friends. I you know. Talk to the yeah, friends. We need good. a widescreen. They're good. You know? Yeah. Um, and then we um, today we had a, a show on downsizing and you know your, everybody's oh. attachment to their stuff. So we had a lot of people attending that. That's a that's a very hot topic about you know where to go next. Yep. Um, tomorrow yep. we're having a cooking demonstration um, with Orchard Grove. Their chefs coming over. And oh. We're going to do a, a demo and so. That, I suppose we, you got that big kitchen, so it's a, a... Yes. Now, do you often do that? Do you often do... We don't often do yeah. that, but... That's a we, great feature. Yeah, we, we look forward to doing this, because yep. I think um, it'll be fun for people to learn something new. You know, January is kind of a dull month, so you want to spice up your uh, your cooking, maybe. Yeah, because you're not going to be going out much. No. I mean, you know, it, it, there's just about, you know, at the end of January, there mm -hmm. are, even for people who've lived here forever, you know, there's just nothing there's, there's, yeah, terrific there's, that's why about you. Turn, you got to come so, up to Barefoot Road. you, you got to cook. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's, that's a great. So that's very exciting. That's exciting. We have um, new um, exercise classes. We have a flex and tone class. We have a new chair yoga class that um, that just started, and we're going to have a gentle ballet starting in March. So um, gentle ballet. Yes, because we do have the ballet bar in one of our in one of our classrooms. So the, oh, the ballet bar. The ballet bar. I know I, where I was, you're going was, with that. I was trying. I was envisioning something completely different. Right. Obviously, I was yeah, emphasis so, on yeah, the ballet. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's going to be fun. Um, so we just have we have great instructors and uh, as you know, great chefs and so and we've got you know outreach. That's an exciting month. And by the way, I know so we got. We, I know we've got we've got Valentine's Day coming. Yes, and we're going to have a special. You are. Yes. But we're not going to talk about what. Well, I might be able to sneak it out. I uh, think lobster ravioli. Oh, that's all good. That's good. This is That'll all good. That'll be a special. So. So another exciting another exciting month at yes, the North Coast Senior Center. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for, for oh, uh, coming welcome. on. And, and I can Thank see that just from the conversation between the two of you that obviously things kind of move s smoothly. Because I, and you, I, you know, I'm going to take one opportunity to shout yeah. out to um, one of Anna's staff that I'm in contact with a lot. Who is? <laughs> Drum roll, please. <laughs> yes. Yes. And this is? No. Um, 
This is good. Isn't that awful? That's what, that's this what is I'm, good. I'm having a, a, a to to, Anna, to to that that well, you know, and God. it's so great to see it Fully. happen. <laughs> it's so great to have it happen to her. This happens to me all the time. It's right? Carolyn Foley. Yeah. Carolyn Foley. That's yeah. great. Who who is like a regular? Who is one, one of one of Anna's staff? She makes yes. it all that, happen. That, yeah, she did, oh, yeah. she really right, yeah. because that's the thing about transportation. It's like a million little things. Yes. Everything and everything's yes. got to go right. Yeah. Yes. In and order for anything to go yeah, right, she's it's the all one that work. makes sure everything always goes right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's all she's great. She's like Oz back there, you know. Yeah. But that's that's I all great. I did tell her if we do this again or when we do this again, <laughs> she's, she's going to be here. <laughs> Yeah, she'll be next year's next year's transportation. Absolutely. Guest. So yeah, thank we're getting you. her in here. That's yeah. great. Whether thank I remember her name or we'll not. Remember. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you did that. Oh, this well, is I mean, this is going to be kind. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm, now, yeah, now I'm going to I'm going to tell the other two. Our, my, my her two friends, Tr Trish Pope and Janice Lawn, the senior center directors in Marlboro and Hudson, uh -huh. about this. this is what you're saying. <laughs> don't so, talk to Carolyn. Thank you so much, and don't cut this. Don't cut this. Piece. <laughs> thank you so thank you so much to you both. Thank you for watching, and uh, we we'll look forward to talking to you at next month on the next installment of Frank and Mary in Northboro. Thank you very much.